Hey guys, so we're talking a little bit about the Byzantine Empire and the spread of Islam. So the Byzantine Empire formed out of the Eastern Empire of Rome after it fell. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, there's a bunch of different Muslim states that are kind of emerging and are going to end up trying to spread Islam. So Constantinople was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire long after Rome fell. And Justinian I became the first ruler of the Byzantine Empire from that place. He had always dreamed of creating a massive Roman Empire, restoring it to its original glory. And one of the ways that he thought that he was going to do that was through the Justinian Code. The Justinian Code was a law code that he created based on Christian ideals, and that reformed and simplified the previous Roman law. Two of the really important institutions to the Byzantine Empire was the emperor and also Christianity. The emperor was somewhat of a priest king who was considered the deputy of Jesus Christ here on earth. He was not only the leader of the government, but also the church. Most of the Byzantine art, architecture, and literature is based on Christian religious beliefs. They didn't want many um, icons was what they called them, um, so they didn't want any idolatry. So they used a lot of mosaics um, that were made with tiles of glass. So in the picture there, you can see Justinian um, in the middle. They used these mosaics as a way to, to show art rather than having people. <clears throat> so over time, a lot of issues started to grow between the Eastern and the Western churches. The Western churches um, in the Western Roman Empire, the Eastern churches in um, the Eastern Empire. And so in the East, the emperor really oversaw the church, but he didn't govern the church. He kind of oversaw and was important for um, carrying out that. But in the West, the pope was the supreme religious leader, and there was no one higher than the pope, whereas in the um, East, the emperor kind of was the church. The differences became so large that a schism or a split occurred between the East and West. The church in the East became known as the Orthodox Church, and the church in the West remained the Roman Catholic Church. So, meanwhile, in the Middle East, Islam was started to form by a prophet named Muhammad ibn Abd Allah, who became known just simply as Muhammad. He reported that he got all these messages from an angel um, who was commanding him to speak on the behalf of God. The, he started collecting followers that he called Muslims, and he started to record all of his revelations from the angel in the Quran, and this became known as the sacred text of Islam. The Quran held um, the five basic acts of worship that we know today as the five pillars of Islam. That was the profession of faith, so the, your ability to profess that you are a true believer. The performance of five daily prayers, giving alms or charity to the poor, fasting during the season of Ramadan, and taking a hajj, otherwise known as a pilgrimage to Mecca. This also included the Quran as jihad, and most people um, confuse jihad for um, some sort of like terrorist act, but instead it was actually known as the struggle for the faith. It's very similar to um, missionaries for Christians. Their idea was to struggle to defend the Muslim community and convert others to Islam, to share um, your, what you know. So as tensions among Islamic followers formed following the death of uh, Muhammad, they had to choose who was going to be the next leader or caliph, whether that was going to be Abu Bakr or Ali, Muhammad's son-in-law. The, the people who followed Abu Bakr became known as Sunnis, while Ali's supporters became known as the Shia. And then we have the split between the two. So Muslims' armies started conquering lots of areas, all the way from China into Spain. And these conquests were meant to share the Muslim faith, and they, many of those conquered people converted to Islam, even though they allowed their pre people to keep their previous... Um, religious freedom, but those people that did keep it had to pay higher taxes. Amongst the people of the Muslim Empire were a lot of non-Arabs, including the Turks, who were Sunni Muslims. They rose to power and eventually took power over Baghdad and went on to actually defeat the Byzantines and create their own empire, the Ottoman Empire, we'll talk about a little bit later. While the Islamic Empire was defeated, the impact of Islam spread well beyond the Middle East into Africa, Spain, and Southeast Asia. So some of the major achievements that they had during their time at their peak was that they traded a whole heck of a lot. And so they came up with a standardized measure of weights as well as the use of credit that helped them to build their trade empire. One of their biggest achievements was in astronomy. They built large observatories. They perfected the astrolab, which was actually going to be used in the age of exploration much later on. Muslim doctors also were able to um, make a significant achievements in pharmacology by creating different um, drugs of available for um, 
sicknesses. Now, a lot of the Muslim art was made out of wood, metal, and ceramics. They believed any human or animal figures led to idolatry, just kind of like we talked about previously. And so they used a lot of those um, geometric patterns and also um, mosaics. A lot of the calligraphy they used also became art, and they used it to produce copies of the Quran. Thank you for joining me. Make sure that you answer your questions.